So I'm just going to go kind of chapters one through four in order here of some things that stuck out to me. Uh, I jotted down. So I kind of forgot I'll have to mediate student conflicts uh, between themselves, uh, not just behavior that's directed at me. So I think of classroom management as getting them, you know, to listen to the teacher, but it's also mediating their negative interactions with each other, knowing what to do in those situations. Uh, a lot of ways that teachers can create management problems. There's kind of that list in the in the first chapter, and that was nice to know what not to do. You know, things to keep in mind. Uh, don't be poorly planned. Don't skimp on your planning, especially you know in the first couple of years. Uh, start the year with some strict rules. You know, don't be loose at the beginning of the year. You got to be consistent. Don't get into power struggles. Um, all great things to keep in mind not to do. Uh, and then just like a note, students aren't the only ones who can deteriorate the classroom environment. You know, teachers can definitely make it worse the same that they can make it better. Um, and there's another note in the book about that, like how you're really the key to the classroom. Like you can take it up or take it down. Um, you don't have to be an aggressive person to handle issues directly and promptly. That was a quote from page 22. Um, your teaching style and, uh, efficiency doesn't have to directly line up with who you are as a person. So I like to have a lot of fun. Um, I'm a pretty relaxed guy, but that doesn't mean that there can't be like strict rules in my classroom that, you know, I enforce. Um, I can keep my personality and, you know, still get the things done that we need to do. So for chapter two, I talked a lot about building relationships with students and how those uh, relationships turn into better behavior in the classroom, We're like, which I firmly believe. Um, I've definitely heard it uh, before this book, like if they don't like you, they're not going to learn from you. And while I don't think that you like have to get all your kids to like you, you know, woo is my number one um, Gallup personality trait. So I think I've, I've got that down. I've, I build good relationships, even just as a para. Um, and I can definitely tell like the worse your relationship gets with a student, like the worse they act out in class and the less they listen to you. I, I've definitely seen some bad examples of it and uh, I've gotten to learn that. So that's great. Um, declines in academic motivation and self-esteem are directly linked to the classroom and can come from unhealthy student-teacher relationships. That's from Campbell on page 30. Uh, again, relationships have a direct effect on self-esteem, attitude towards school, attitude towards you as a teacher, attitude to, excuse me, towards your class, which obviously is going to affect academic performance. Uh, and then take it slow. You don't have to have an immediate connection. Like first week, first month, I think the book even said like halfway through the first semester, you'll start to develop relationships. Like that's like October, you know, so don't, you don't have to rush it uh, and don't create fake relationships. Um, you know, like I said, they're not going to you know, build a connection on day one, but it's important to start asking questions, get to know your students. Um, chapter three, the chain of respect starts with you. Um, I'd never considered all five, so it listed teacher, teacher self-respect, teacher to student, student self-respect, student to student respect, student to teacher respect. Had a nice little cycle there. I like that. Never, never thought about that before. Uh, if teachers don't demonstrate and talk about respect, it will not happen in a classroom. Set expectations at the beginning of the year. Definitely come through with those expectations always, but especially at the beginning of the year, you know, set the tone. Um, and talk to them about respect. That's something I would not have thought to do. Um, like I said, respect from the teacher breeds respect from students and like just bringing that up and talking about it. Uh, also, don't yell. Watch your body language. Those are two things um, that I, you know, I'm just not going to yell in the classroom ever. So you can be, you can be firm, but I kind of think that students know if the teacher starts yelling at them, like the teacher's kind of losing the battle in a lot of situations or losing their cool, which is not a good look as the adult. You're supposed to be in charge of the room. Uh, I think when you lose control, you're showing the kids that it's okay for them to lose control. Um, there was a guide on pages 86 and 87. It had a ton of great examples of behaviors that are respectful and then behaviors that are disrespectful um, from student to teacher, teacher to student, and then student to student. I thought that was really cool. I took a picture of a lot of those. I thought, of all of them, I thought they'd make great posters for like your classroom someday. Just like... Here's a list of respectful behaviors. Here's an example of disrespectful behaviors. I like that. I think it would work at every level. Um, chapter four, anticipate distractions or interruptions. Things like students needing passes, kids walking in, lay outbursts, especially these days on Zoom, crazy stuff like that. Like prepare for it to go wrong. Prepare for it to not go right. Because if you're anything like me, it's probably not gonna go right, especially the first time you do it. So just have a plan for what happens when your first plan goes wrong. 
Um, one of the tips was create a unit calendar, marking off earlier late starts, deadlines, get, get all those hiccups uh, you know, out of the way, know which weeks you are gonna have five classes or five days of school, which weeks you aren't. Uh, in modern, you know, in today's times, Millard's 50-50, so it's like know which students are here which day and if it's an A day or a B day and um, figure out all those things ahead of time. You don't wanna be caught off guard. Um, prepare, prepare, prepare. So that's all I got for the video. Thanks.